Mr. Roth gets his hands on Twitch. Well, we'll see how it works out, ladies and gentlemen. Picks and bans getting underway. Instant Yasuo ban. Not surprised by that We're going to get that one through. Casted and banned has to be a consideration for Super Hot Crew. Yep. Um, for junglers, you, you've obviously got all of the, the, the primary junglers, but I do want to say that we've been seeing uh, Impaler. He played Jarvan yesterday, if memory serves. Had a difficult time in the early stages of the game, but later on, once Mima hit that power level, he then had a lot more positive cataclysms. And slow ban phase from both of these teams, really calculating what they want to remove off the table. Well, there is the KO. We saw Mima going huge on that one yesterday. No surprise, it has to be considered and taken away. We've just seen Overpower doing the exact same in the last match. So both of these teams are, are Twitch teams. They, Candy Panda and Mr. Rolls are big fans. If it's not banned, it is also a consideration for an early pick. We know that Yero played Nami yesterday and had some very, very good tidal waves. It was our, uh, you know, LCS big play all the way at the top of the show. So there's, there's a lot going on. Nothing thrown towards junglers yet. So if Lee Sin and Lisa are available, we'll see what Impaler decides to run. He's the one that's been talking about these special champions and these <laughs> special things. You know, it, it could be a Nocturne in the jungle. It could be something as simple as that, which Impaler has also played in the past. Oh, Twisted Fate being taken away. A lot of focus on those top laners as well. Nidalee's open. Final well. one will be Lee Sin. Renekton open. Nidalee open. What will their first choice be? Will it be Twitch maybe for Candy Panda? Will Twitch, it be Cogmore? Twitch, Nidalee, Elise with banning Yasuo. It opens you up to locking in one of those champions. I, I, I'm very surprised by Morgana. I'm very, very surprised considering the power of some of the other champions that are available. Morgana is just very reactive, very defensive. And while you don't reveal anything, it now allows Super Haku to run whatever they consider um, the most impactful, the most powerful. But they could save the support pick. They don't need to lock it into later and go for a jungler, go for an Evelyn, go for an Elise, go for J4 if they wanted to. But this is often what SK actually prefer to do. They often prefer to counter pick into what their opposition do. Even when they're on the blue side, they'll generally sacrifice. We'll see whether Super Heart Crew go towards that AD carry. Brahm, of course, is available. Will get locked in alongside Lucian for Mr. Alas. Very, very strong combination. Uh, concussive blows passive plus Lucian's light slinger passive. Double tap, yeah. Double tap, two shots is just going to get the stun. We're not revealing anything. We're not seeing anything. Junglers are still up. Top lane is still available. Shivana's there. Trundle's there. Irelia's there. Hell, Aatrox is there. Freddy's played Aatrox in the past. Mima has played Dr. Mundo in the past. Everything is available, and it just depends on what these teams want to run, because this is the safest start you can go for. There's very little that you can be worried about when you see this Lucian Brahm Morgana, because you know what you're in for. Well, we haven't seen Caitlyn for a long time, that's for sure. Caitlyn Panda has been locked in. Evelyn, of course, also for Sven Skeren. So, Genja's the only one that's really been running Caitlyn in recent weeks. With a Morgana and with a Caitlyn, I wonder if SK want to maybe look for a tower swap to try and avoid the 2v1. Caitlyn can do okay against Lucian thanks to her range, and Morgana can avoid at least one of the stuns that Bram can put down. But what Caitlyn and Morgana do offer with the long-range binding the wave clear that they have on the Pilt of a Peacemaker and the Tormented Soil is very fast tower pushing. The only thing that doesn't necessarily work with the lane swap tower push is an Evelyn. She's not the strongest, of course, being a melee champion means if you go for, uh, you know, fast tower pushing strategy, it is quite difficult to, to make that work. And for the time being, just very calculated decisions. We still don't know what SK are looking for. Yeah, SK playing a dangerous game though. Not going for Cassidy, letting it through. Super Hot Crew not fancying it themselves. Has taken a couple of hits over the last few patches, of course. Lulu locked in, though, alongside Jarvan for Impaler. Despite Elise being available, goes towards that Jarvan, who we saw being very successful yesterday. Yeah, very successful in the later stages of the game. Uh, it's been a while since we've seen Impaler on Jarvan, and I think his laning phase definitely could do with some work. But with the Lulu locked in, we, we're not 100% sure if that's top lane or mid lane yet. You have the opportunity to swap that one around which is great. And also the wave clear from Lulu is very good. You've got relatively good wave clear from Lucian if they need to get themselves into a tower defense situation. But we're not seeing anything exciting. Super hard crew oh, now we have are. been full of nonsense. It's not locked in yet. Cassidy is though. He trucks alongside in for Freddy. And we've seen Jezzes on Cassidy before. It was uh, one of the first games of the season, I believe. And he managed to pull that one out to great success. Yeah, it is something that... Oh. There okay. we go. So, okay, okay, okay. So, what this means, 
that's either going to be a Jarvan top lane jungle nocturne or jungle Jarvan mid lane nocturne. It's a mid lane nocturne. Against the Cassidy, that is going to be very, very good. We need to just see how this, this works out. Because you can spell shield those force pulses, get the attack speed, and any melee champion does very well against Cassidy in the early stages of the game. You can punish very hard. And what I love about this combination is the gank power that you have with a Jarvan uh, uh, flag and drag into the paranoia from Nocturne. The only thing is, Caitlyn, Cassidy, and Aatrox can all get out of Cataclysm Ultimates. So Impaler needs to be very on the ball when it comes to targeting the right people because there's a number of champions that can escape from that terrain that gets built up. So there's theory behind this. We've seen it in Korea as well, and this is where the theories come from. It's a big, big gamble, and they said they got something special. They get, actually do this time. Get ahead or lose. That is how mid lane Nocturne works. If their first few ganks and he doesn't shut down Jezus quickly enough, Jezus and Kassan should outscale him. No, with the lineups, are you still back in SK Gaming? Head over to Twitter and tell us who has the advantage now by tweeting hashtag SK win or hashtag super hot crew win to LOL Esports. And we'll be checking those results shortly. So, Cassid in Nocturne, this mid lane, this is almost certainly the one to watch. Yes, definitely. There's no doubt about it. We need to keep our eyes on how aggressive Selfie plays the lane. He's going to be pushing very heavily with both his Duskbringer and his Umbra Blades passive. So there's going to be AOE going down. What I love about Nocturne picks as well is the power that it will give you in a split pushing comp. He's going to be able to affect the side lanes and pull aggro towards him and then still respond with paranoia. The question is how far ahead can he get in the early stages? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game two of the LCS underway. SK Gaming currently in second position. Seven wins, four losses up against the super hot crew in third position with six wins and five losses. Can they tie up that second place alongside SK Gaming, who, of course, are playing blue versus red? Sven Skeren, is he going to sneak in? We saw an invade from Gambit. Didn't quite work out. Rockout were ready for it. Let's see if they do the same. I really feel like Super Hot Crew need to have very good vision to deal with Sven Skeren's Evelyn. If Evelyn is able to camp the middle lane and help uh, control and shut down Selfie, the gambit of running this Nocturne is going to be a little worrying. You see, Mr. Rawls is already almost challenging Candy Panda. Oh, advantage SK. Candy Panda gets an auto attack down. And it looks like it's going to be head to head lanes. So that means Sven, oh, maybe they're backing. Yeah, if Super Hawk could go for the lane swap, they can almost uh, force Sven Skeren's hands. But again, we need to just see how, how the lanes eventually end up. Now to see Yeru running the dragon. Braum skin as well, my favorite one. So, Mime in the top could be standard lanes, as you mentioned, but no, it's a switch. Yeah. Will be Mr. Riles and Yero heading up there. They're going to go for that 2v1. Will they go with the buddy system? Selfie's got a little twitch on going in the mid lane. So, this will be interesting to see how Selfie handles himself on Nocturne. You know, he, he's been playing many, many more champions since re qualifying in the promotion tournament for summer. He pulled up Fizz, he pulled up Twisted Fate, we've seen his Orianna, he got his hands on Yasuo eventually. So he can play the melee uh, AD champions, and Super Hot Crew, they've proved up, they're going for an invade, they want to try and put pressure on Sven Skeren, this is very important to help Selfie in that middle lane. Forces Freddy away, they are going to get in towards this blue buff, Mime up running defensive duties to keep him well away from that one, Sven Skeren is going to try and rotate straight towards it. Super Hot Crew now coming out on top after the Nocturne pickup, despite the casted in being picked up by SK Gaming. Freddy and Sven Skeren, they're going to react quickly. They want to go towards that blue buff. They're going to start off with the red, though. And you can see, meanwhile, we do have Impaler. And alongside him, Mimer going towards that red. Yeah, and there's the, the pushing power that Selfie will have on Nocturne. Against Cassidy, especially in the early stages, um, he should be able to shove him in row. And that. what I like about that is it should also allow Selfie to either get involved in counter jungling or in defending his jungle camps. I don't think Impaler and Mima can get to that blue buff quickly enough. And even if they could, Enrate has been pulled up for support. So they're trading jungle map halves. SK are in control of the bottom right-hand corner and Super Arc in control of the top left-hand corner. Yeah, it's going to be quite clear for them. And they had vision of it, so Super Arc crew in full knowledge of what is going on across the map right now. Jez has keep her eye on which way they level this one because it's going to be something of interest. It's not a normal matchup, that's for sure, that we've seen in 
any LCS in any country. But look at SK, they're reacting themselves. We've got the bottom half of the map. We are going Dragon. Super Hot Crew are looking to take the tower. So they've grouped up with their four members in the top lane. And with that Demartian standard for Jarvan, it's also going to give attack speed to the rest of the champions involved. So Dragon for tower, it actually should be a gold advantage to Super Hot Crew, as a super early Dragon is not worth all that much. Whereas the tower is taking a very long time to go down. It, it almost looks like the focus isn't 100% on shredding it. They're denying a lot of CS but from, is not with them. from Freddy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's backed off. Yeah, they are going to let the tower go down. That's going to wipe out as many minions as possible. They're going to have to finish it, though, if they don't want Freddy to defend this one, which he will. They chose to hold on there. Yeah, it really, it really didn't look like everyone was giving their all to secure the objective. So SK with a very early advantage. You know, we've been seeing those three four-minute dragons from um, teams mostly running Elise in the jungle, actually. But today, it's just been a matter of lane swap. If you put your duo lane top, you lose dragon. It's, it's that simple. And actually, in the next patch, uh, dragon gold goes up to help ensure that if you decide to make that trade, you're actually, uh, it's actually a little more worthwhile for the team that gets the dragon early on. So, Super Hot Crew switch back around, and it's standard lanes once again. Candy Panda and Rated up against Mr. Riles and Yero in this bottom lane. Selfie has got a level advantage over Jezza so far. Gets that, does bring it down on him. Gets a couple of basic attacks down. Actually cancelled the animation on the last one there, and I think he hit the minion instead of Jezza's, which didn't take him quite so low as I think he'd like. Of course, with that cleave bonus he gets on that. We're wiping those minions out very quickly. 40 CS to 28 as well in that mid lane. Big advantage. Going back early. Going to get himself his first item. Yeah, and of course, the, the passive from Nocturne is also going to allow himself to sustain through some of Cassidy's poke. So, Jezus hasn't really been troubled by this Nocturne self. He's played fairly passively. He's, he's pushed the lane a little, but one minion wave has been lost at five minutes, which is not a big deal. When you consider if you'd run something like an Orianna, you could have punished that Cassidy significantly harder. But Selfie is getting closer to that Paranoia. He's gone for three long swords. So he's gone all in for damage, looking for the bonus uh, AD. So his Umbra Blades and his Dusk Ring have just got that higher impact. And you can see Impaler already moving to this middle lane. Fortune stood right on top of Ward, so Jesus is completely aware of it. Yeah, just slightly too early. That time's out, doesn't matter. Knows he's still there. Not going to worry about it. Sven Skirin was waiting on guard duty just off the side of the race. That means Impaler, he's kind of wasting his time here. Instead, he's actually going to go for a bit of invade, but you can see there's not really any jungle minions there either to take away. Could go across towards the white. Oh, maybe go towards the top. Meanwhile, Unbreakable forced out there, stopping Candy Panda. Trying to get the stun down on towards him. Mr. Riles is not really following up. It's actually nice to see Yero react to that. Um, whenever you see these Brahms being played, one of the nicest initiation combos is to use the stand behind you to jump to a minion then look for either a auto attack or to get that Winter's Bite onto a target because you can jump to the minion wave as quickly as possible. SK are pushing bottom, but Selfie, the range on that Paranoia at rank one is not particularly massive. He needed to get a little closer to that bottom lane to make it work. And unfortunately, backed away as he's seen that Jesus was pushing up through the middle. Good trade straight back on towards him. As you mentioned, those three long swords. Selfie reacting as well, went straight back. Started out with that cloth armor, I believe. And he's keeping up relatively well on the minions, despite the strange setup that he's got. Sven Skurin looking towards, coming across towards this blue buff. Let's see if Super Hot Crew want to react to this one. Impaler did have a look towards it earlier, but I don't think he's in any position to take it, and Jezus will get the blue. Now, we also need to keep an eye on how quick Selfie's reaction times are. That Shroud of Darkness, the spell shield on Nocturne's W, is only active for 1.5 seconds. So he really needs to make sure he pulls that up at exactly the right time uh, to block whatever damage. And they've caught Candy a little. Well, they're way too slow, meanwhile, in the jungle. But you can see down this bottom, as you mentioned, they caught Candy out there. Super Hot Crew went looking towards that blue. They they were the ones that had the timer. They were the ones that took it out, yet they were not there on time. Now, unfortunately not. Super Hot Crew are just content to continue laning. Uh, CS pretty even across the board, with the exception of Impaler falling a little behind. You could argue because of his attempted gank mid lane and uh, a little bit of floundered time elsewhere around the map. But a very slow start and this interesting Nocturne pick hasn't shown why it's picked yet. Yeah, not yet. Pink Ward 
Found out Sven Skjern will clear that one. Let's talk about this top lane. We haven't had a chance to talk about Freddy and Miner too much. It is an Aatrox versus Lulu. Super, uh, SK Gaming actually on the Invader. They did take the blue before, remember, and Paler's coming around, but he's too late to this one. SK going to take it. Yeah, that's going down very, very quickly. I think Impaler had sensed something was up. No vision on the bottom lane, so he didn't look to invade. Waited for the support of Selfie. And, you know, you mentioned Mimer and, and Freddy. They're quietly going about their business. With the knockup for Freddy being his primary initiation, and while he's got the, the slow from those Blades of Torment as well, I don't really think there's a lot of kill threat from either Freddy to Mimer or vice versa, especially because Mimer's only got a Chalice of Harmony. So until jungle intervention gets involved, I think these two might just be living on their little CS island and looking to make the best of uh, the experience in the gold that they can farm up. Self is going to back himself off. Jezzes has done the same. He's going towards the Rod of Ages early on. Brutalizer now completed along with Vampiric Scepter for Selfie. Mimer, as you mentioned, is clearing out the wave and breakable. Big Dragon, but it's not going to be blocked out by Yero because he used it far too early. Dark Binding also catching on and the Piltover catching on towards him. So the Unbreakable effectively doing nothing before all that damage come in. That's very important for SK because they can ensure the engage power of Yero is just completely reduced. Now that Yero has access to his Glacial Fissure at level 6, the potential to go all in and look for kills is there. The slow is massive at 60%, and if Lucian gets a full culling down, um, even at this stage in the game, it's very scary. But look at Yero, his HP down, and he's caught oh. another binding. Yero's in trouble, they're going to surely dive on towards this one. He's going to try and sneak away, but look at the back, you can see Sven Skeren ready and waiting to come in. That next wave, he's going to be on Yero. He's definitely going to. Glacial Fissure is available. Summoner Heal was used in the previous engage. So if Exhaust is not timed effectively from Yero, he's going to be giving up potential first blood. Selfie's looking to come in, and Paler's already en route. Sven's going off the side there, that wave coming in, and Mr. Riley's nose in the culling in there, Dark Binding doesn't land, blocks out, Glacial Fisher goes in, Sven's going, flashes away, stun on the tower, Sven's going, going down, what a fantastic turnaround by the Super Hot Crew, and now Jez is on Selfie, going in towards there, blocks out, uses the Paranoid, does not have the damage though, Jez is with the Ignite, just about runs out, and it's a one for one. Our oh, damage is just not there from Selfie, and that interesting pick from Super Hot Crew gives up their first death, a very, very good play from Yero. Manages to hold Sven Skeren in place, stun him up under the tower thanks to the concussive blows, and it's super hot crew that grab the first blood. They should also get a lot of damage on this bottom lane tower. One thing that we also didn't catch on camera, but both Mima and Freddy went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They burned their ultimates and nobody went down. So it did look like an aggressive play from Freddy, who used his teleport to come back to lane. Super hot crew, they've got the top, they've got oh, Freddy! Oh, he's gonna try and go for the double tap. Yero tried to get into one time. Katakas comes in, he actually catches Spencer, and not the one he wanted, Candy Panda, who he was looking for. But they take the tower and keep on pushing. Suddenly this game turned aggressive. That is a super decisive play from Impaler. There was no hesitation. Flag, drag, flash, slam, dunk. And if Candy Panda had not had his flash available, he would have gone down. Mr. Rolls is trying to make use of the double buffs that he'd secured. And with him backing away now, he's going to spend 2,800 gold. So he's got a massive amount of money that he's got to spend thanks to the kills, thanks to the tower. The Super Hot Crew, while they've given up a kill, they are still looking like in a pretty good position. Well, oftentimes throughout the spring split, Mr. Rallis was the man that Super Hot Crew had to call on him right now. No surprises, he is in the lead right now, but Self is in trouble. He's going to flash away, does get away just about. That Shroud of Darkness, the stopping that bounce up from Freddy. Yeah, not uh, no other spell shields. And Super Hot Crew, they're mid lane, Nocturne. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. SK got the timing on Dragon. They secure the first one very, very early on and very easily grab further objectives. Top three, of course, was traded. So Mima finally taking that one down. It was on a slither of health for a yeah. long period of time, but that means it's 2-0 to zero in turrets. Mr. Rales now has to be a little cautious. You can see SK were trying to come around the side there in Paler. He's a little bit behind at the moment. So 100 CS for Jez is at 12 minutes, a completed Rod of Ages, a kill under his name, two dragons. This is a Cassadin that is next to Permaband everywhere. And Jez has already got victories on this champion. He's He needs to be focused, he needs to be shut down. Mexican waves going through the audience right now. Crowd keeping themselves entertained. The game's actually pretty lively, and Blue Buff is once again up. And this time around, Super Hot Crew were looking to get closer. They have got the ward coverage down there. Jezzes is yet to move across, though. 
Meanwhile, look at the river. We can see Mr. Rales and Yero. They're making their way up, clearing out the pink wards as they move towards that mid lane. So Paranoia is available as is Cataclysm for Super Hot Crew. If they want to contest for this blue buff, they do have the tools available to them. Svensk is going to try drop, and here comes Impaler. Oh, he tried to flag and drag strike. Didn't get in there. Instead, they're going to go towards Svensk. Cataclysm, as you said, is available. There's the flash. He hasn't got enough to follow through. Yero, meanwhile, blocking out the damage in that mid lane. Saves himself away from Jezus. He gets blocked off by the ace the hole. Glacial Fisher goes down. Jezus caught out. Stun goes in there. They have to back away. Coming into the side. Look at this. You can see Impaler's in there. Slides on through. Cataclysm on Candy Banner. 90 caliber nets away. Very nicely played. And still, no one goes down. Freddy looking around the side. Jezus waiting in the wings. Very low on health. Both these teams slowly disengage. Very, very dramatic turn of events. The mid tower is close to going down if Super Hot Crew can stick around. But because they've got no ultimates and their primary initiators are a little low, they've backed away from the tower. What they also ensured was the blue buff was taken by Sven Skeren, not by Jezz's. That will also delay Jezz's farming and his power for the next few minutes. So overall, Super Hot Crew come out not too bad in that situation. They got the exhaust from Enrated, they got the flash from Sven Skeren in exchange for actually just the paranoia in that situation. They burned a few ultimates, but additional summoner spells being burned for SK. So Super Hot Crew, in the bigger picture, come out ahead from that total trade. Himself is backing off, calling himself Bilgewater and Brutalizer last time around. Let's see what he picks up. It's going to be played a Rune King completed, maybe. We do see, of course, the uh, beginnings of Azonias coming out for Jez. It's almost certainly an important defensive mechanism with that arm guard up against Selfie in the mid lane, despite the fact, well, lanes are kind of already gone. 15 minutes in, this game is opening right up. It really is. And Selfie's starting to pull ahead in terms of CS, uh, slowly growing further. I really want to see if Selfie decides to play the split push role. For anybody who watches the NALCS, Meteos was playing a jungle Nocturne and was able to single-handedly win a game thanks to his you know, excessive farming and then basically backdooring because there's such good wave uh, pushing power. Oh, that was a little odd. Uh, on the side of, of Selfie. But I'm also interested to see how he deals with Freddy on Aatrox. I believe those will be the two champions looking to split push in these side lanes and I want to see how the duel plays out because it is something that we don't see from solo lane nocturnes. Well, at the moment, Jess is the one that's trying to put the pressure down on towards him. Sven Skeren spotted out by the pink ward. He does finally notice that he's walking past it. Back in the mid lane. Just got to give it a spot. I know, right? I know. Mr. Rales and Yero keep trying to force the pressure on towards these mids. This could be a fight. AD carry a selfie looking to engage. You can see coming down, it's going to be Sven Skeren. Selfie's going to have to get the support of this one. He's going to try and come in. Teleport comes down. Selfie's trying to hold on, but it's not going to be long enough. And now Sven Skeren's in trouble. Myron and Baylor have to turn this one back around. Jessis can jump in any second. There's a bounce. There he is. Sven Skeren gets himself a double. And now Myron's in trouble. He gets slowed down. He should be able to get to the tower and be safe. But it's a double kill for Sven Skeren. Two kills going to Sven. That's actually quite important because Super Haku would not have wanted that on Cassadin. Unfortunately for the Super Haku, no flash on Selfie means he couldn't chase Jezzes. But you'll notice with the item threshold of that Brutalizer and the Bilgewater Cutlass, Selfie won that duel. Selfie was 1v1 against Jezzes and Jezzes needed to flash over the wall to get away. Unfortunately for Super Hot Crew, the support of the rest of SK's team was in greater numbers and it meant they could secure two more kills. So right now SK Gaming trying to start forcing an advantage and it's not often that they get the lead in the early game. And they move into mid game. We know how strong they are in the late game. Dark Binding on Yero, Breakable up at the right time though, blocks out a lot of that damage. Again, Candy Panda using the ace in the hole the moment it's off cooldown. Yeah, Mr. Roll tanks up the shot, I believe, because he's got the sustain of the Bloodthirster. So he's going to be able to at least regenerate that health, uh, replenish that health rather on this next minion wave. But what I like about um, SK as a team is they are the most decisive team when it comes to finishing games. When they do have a lead in Europe, they definitely close the game out more effectively than any other team. Super Hot Crew are just playing full defensive duties. They're waiting for Cataclysm, they're waiting for Paranoia before they look to engage further. Well, Selfie hasn't come out on top in the last two duels, but that's kind of been down to the fact it's been 2v1s. 
did lose that one-on-one -on -one in the mid lane. Can he find an aggressive bomb by Mr. Rales? Turns it back around with a bit of damage. Double tap, not landing. Went towards the minion instead. Mima forced away by Jezus. Jezus is starting to grow in power. And this could become a problem for Super Park Crew. They let this through. They knew the casting was going to get picked up. It's something oh, they've, they've painted it. out. Candy Panda caught out, doesn't get a hooked in there. Impaler taking very low here. So it's going looking to maybe go across on that one. Flash is not quite available for him just yet. Selfie, meanwhile, off the side, has to perform defensive duties in the top lane. Yeah, and while Super Hot Crew have been kept busy in the middle, you can see that uh, Freddy was able to push top lane and Jez has been able to push the bottom lane. There is good wave clear from Super Hot Crew, though, so they do have defensive capabilities, but they just don't have the numbers. Presence from SK, this is the tower secured. That's the tower going down, Jez is spotted out, but it didn't matter. The rest of SK all there in numbers. Selfie might want to come from behind. He's got Paranoia available, they know Dragon is up, and uh, Super Hoku can engage from very big distances. The, the combo of Jarvan plus the combo of Nocturne is quite scary, Trade. but they're going to be there too late. Yeah, they're trading. You can see they're already pinging onto the tower, saying we'll take the tower instead. Straight on itself, he simply face tanks that one. They know the dragon's going to go down. It's SK that secure that once again. Third one of the game for them as well. Good control. 4,000 golden lead. Uh, more kills, slightly more CS, actually a lot more CS on Sven Skaren. We're going to get back to that in a second. The Super Hot Crew are little out of position. They do have their back to the top lane. Freddy may want to jump over this wall. Now, Glacial Fish is up for Yero. That's going to be how they start the fight, and he's doing it. Azor in the hole, blocked out. Yellow start doing the damage straight on towards Candy Pan. He tries to get away. The feeling's not quite enough because he got exhausted out by Enraged, who turns around, puts the shackles back down on Selfie. He's out of this fight right now. Sven Skaren comes around. Mr. Rales just trying to put some damage from the side. Freddy trying to catch on towards him. Oh, the stun not quite landing through. And now he's going to try and catch on towards him. Jess take it so low. He gets stunned out. Fader goes in. Super Hot Crew turned his fight just back around. Freddy's going to come back out of Bloodwell. He's going to bounce on towards him. Yarrow takes it so low. Mr. Rales is going in there. Can he get the ace down? Turns it back around. He's down. And that is the ace. It's a five for two to SK Game and then a triple kill for Candy Panda. Super Hot Crew got super split in the jungle because all of their forces were on different sides and Jezus was unable to kill Candy Panda. It just allowed SK's mobility to go in and out. Look at how deep Selfie dives. But because of the black shield, the fear proc is never going to throw Candy Panda away. In the background, you've got a multi-man knockout from Freddy. He keeps Super Haku split and Super Haku have just taken too much damage. The kill threat that Brown's passive offers was too much. And look at the HP, average HP in this team fight. It is so much higher for SK. And unfortunately for Super Haku, they just got pulled too far forward and Candy Panda just sits in the back line, uses the range of Caitlyn to great effect. A very good team fight for SK Gaming. I think Super Hot Crew, it was a good attempt, but they're a little <laughs> too far behind. Candy Panda flashed to get that triple kill at the end. <laughs> Wanted that last hit, he's like, mine. Hashtag worth. Kill secured is uh, another person perspective. Mima, he's going to get in trouble here. Jezus goes in towards him, feeling much more confident and casted in now, and this is a captain that's been unhindered throughout the whole game. I'd like to point out that Jezus is building towards a Iceborne Gauntlet. He's got the Sheen collected. It is something that we've seen uh, in North America last week. A full tank casted in. He just went full armor, Frozen Heart, Iceborne Gauntlet, Randian's Omen. While he didn't have necessarily the greatest amount of damage, against the melee threats of Lucian, Nocturne, Jarvan and Lulu's not necessarily the highest burst damage mage. That is such a smart item choice. It allows you to kite, it allows you to control the super hot crew, get those slows down, and also if Jezus jumps into a team fight, he's not going to get instantly melted by all of this attack damage um, itemization from the super hot crew. So far, SK Gaming looking solid. Impaler takes another ace in the hole. The second it's on cooldown, he's generally using that one out there. So let's go and clearing out these ward. They didn't quite get a vision of that one. Freddy off the side, he's split pushing down that bot lane. You can see Jez is in the top lane, he's pushing in. Selfie is keeping them at bay, and they're going to see Mima trying to do the same from Freddy. A 1-3-1 push from SK Gaming here. And SK are arguably the best split pushers in the league at this point in time. I think they play the map very, very well, and it's the reason that they can finish games so effectively. We're at 22 minutes. Freddy and Spence have got positioning on the inner turret. They've got backup from the rest of the team, and Mima's in trouble. They're going on to Mima. He's already used his wild growth. He's got no escape now. He's going to try and use the speed. Can he get away from this one? He does just about crawl out of there. 
he does the tower. get himself away. It will be the tower going down. No support from Super Crew. Contrast how SK Gaming forced the objective and Jezus is getting jumped on. Impaler's coming around on towards it. Paranoid goes in there. He's going to try and turn this one back around. Cataclysm may well lock them both in there. Jezus tries to slide away from this one. Impaler, he needs to get his dragon a flag. Get back in there. No, can't catch Jezus. Nah, I don't think so. Jezus will get away. But the, the point that I was getting to a moment ago, look at how effectively SK Gaming forced that inner turret. They managed to pull Super Hot Crew all across the map by the 1-3-1 one, one push. The moment an opportunity presented in the bottom lane, they went for it. Svenskeren and Dove, he went around the back line and they got the tower secured. So SK Gaming have got one outer turret still standing uh, to secure, which is in the top lane. And I do think it's going to be the next point of focus for the team. Get some vision in Super Hot Crew's red side jungle. I mean, look at Candy Pan. He's got himself a chain vest as his next item because of how much physical damage Super Hot Crew have it is fairly easy to itemize against a team that is mostly AD damage. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, why would you open with Paranoia? If he's literally the only man walking in the 2v1 situation. So it wasn't that he opened with it, he'd already been dueling and the Rift Walk from Jezus had already been used. So mm. after the Rift Walk, Selfie then followed with Paranoia and Impaler was coming from Skybush. So it's, it's the only way that Impaler can stick well, to him. Give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not sure on that one myself. He'd already used the, the Blade of the Rune King as well yeah. earlier on. So Have he's to trying to close. stick to him. But unfortunately, it's just it's so difficult to stick to Kasten. He needed Impaler there sooner to try to get that uh, Martial Cadence like burst damage down from Jarvan's passive. And it, it didn't it didn't happen at the time. It was not enough, that's for sure. Freddy, a selfie with him this time. Let's see if Selfie fancies this one. He's got backup of Impaler. Capitalism is available any second now. Freddy is just going to back away from this one. Slide straight in. Freddy already backs away. Now he's got the support of the rest of his team. Four members moving around, but they're going to look to shut off. Yero coming in the side there. They have good vision. Does get caught out. The Unbreakable goes down, but it's not enough to stop the damage from SK Gaming. Sven Skeren snuck around the side of that shield. Killed before he can even animate his ulti. Now they pick the uh -oh. fight with Freddy. 2v1. Freddy wants this one, that's for sure. He's going for Impaler. Impaler Capitalism's in. That's not what you want to do. Run away, man. It's Brit versus Brit, and Freddy is coming out and topping the 2v1. Now Sven Skeren's going to join him. He's got backup of Scandinavia to help him out on this one. Poland is not working out too well for Selfie right now. He may well get on towards him. Mimer's coming around. The Bloodwell has been popped. Where are you going to go, though? Selfie is running away. He's got no one to help him out, and Sven Skeren is tracking. And Selfie's got no mana to play with either. It does look like Super Crew have just been pulled too thin. Selfie uh -oh. should go down. Selfie pops the ultimate on towards him. He should get the slow. Selfie trying to get the speed boost, but look at this. Jezzes is closing ground. They're actually taking the dragon down while this all happens. Sven Skeren quite happily dueling. And that's a jungler taking down a mid laner. And that's just not a good position for Super Hot Crew. They're so far behind in terms of gold and they're just not on the same page. Mima and Selfie didn't want to pick a fight with Freddy because they were afraid of if SK was going to respond. The reason they didn't shut him down and just engage in that uh, little narrow opening in the forest is because of the fact SK were grouped in middle. Anyways, SK grabbed themselves another dragon. Super Hot Crew oh. fall further behind in Where gold. Are they going? And now Super Hot Crew may lose an inhibitor turret because nobody's home. Defend your base, guys. That's what you've got to do. SK Gaming in four members pushing in, taking the inhibitor for free. Nobody reacting. We see Yero and Mr. Rales slowly making their way back behind SK Gaming. They're going to try and collapse around him, but I'm not sure this is the play they want to make. Glacial Fisher lands on towards Fence Gurren. They're going to lock him up. He will go down. But question is, can they make anything else from this one? Selfie, wild growth, that to be used. Candy Panda caps on towards him. He takes it down. Yero's in trouble. He gets picked up as well. Jess is on towards him. This could be SK Gaming closing the game out right here. Impaler's going to get focused out. He tries to slide in, but he's got five members of SK Gaming all over him. Candy Panda gets himself a second then it's a three for zero with an exposed base there's a minion wave coming up behind him and there is wave clear from lulu and lucian so they're going to back away london is calling and freddy is answering he is in super hot crew's face landing so many knockups time and time and time again and the super hot crew their early game uh strength of jarvan and nocturne is just not working out Look at the focus from Super Haku. Selfie is doing the best he can to force the big threat of Candy Panda away. But unfortunately, he takes so much damage in the process because he's not built anything tanky that he can't stick around once the targets need to get changed. And Freddy stands running amok in the entire Super Haku crew before they shut down Impaler and actually back away from uh, the push. 13-3, it's clear to say this champion of choice that's going to surprise and amaze everybody was Cassidy. <laughs>
good turnaround. Good turnaround. 2 1 7. SK doing a fantastic job there. Svenska and went down pretty early on, of course. And we should note, of course, all of the damage early on that did happen. But Jezzas has stuck to his guns, farmed it out, and again proven that Kazadin cannot be allowed through. Now, and what I really like about SK is their itemization. You've got a Warmog Zama and Svenskaren in addition <laughs> to the Randian Zomis. That's just rude, yeah. A little bit. Uh, so he's going to be able to survive for an eternity. Candy Panda's got himself a Guardian Angel. So if Selfie ever does catch Candy Panda out of position and without the support of Enrated, he's just going to come back to life. And there's enough damage from Kassan and Evelyn and Aatrox to actually turn team fights around. So top tower was secured by SK. 12k gold ahead. Candy Pan is just using that ace in the hole for, for, for control and for uh, reducing the combat effectiveness of his opponents. Tubaku don't even want this fight. No, sooner or later, I'm going to see Stand Behind Me used by Yero once he gets that unbreakable up. One time in this game to actually block those ace in the holes. Hasn't used it yet, though. As it extends, SK Gaming. They're pushing around. They're going to rotate along. Another inner turret going down. Just moving by the numbers in towards the middle while... Well, you can see, Super Hot Crew, they have to defend that bottom wave. That's where Selfie's gone. The top wave being cleared out by Mima, while SK just move on with the minions in the mid. So with the super minions in the bottom lane, SK can also afford to split push again, just control the side lanes and let the minions do the work for them. Once that inhibitor respawns, they could even go back to a 1-3-1 style of push because Freddy needs multiple members to take him down. Jezus is so mobile, he can just get away from a ton of fights. And SK completely uh, in control of this area of the map. They've got full vision. They're trying to take Baron down. Look at Supaku. They're coming to contest. And Nocturne's not with them. This is 4v5 at best. And he found a little out of position. Doesn't matter as Jezzes goes in. It's going to be Glacial Fissure. Jezzes is actually caught up. Taken down. Not quite stunned out, though. Yero, though, just taking a beat in. Mima in all sorts of trouble. Sven Skerin got so much damage going down. Ace in the hole. Not enough to finish them off. SK did peel away. They got themselves in Paler, though. That's the jungler down. No smite available. Back to Baron. Four versus five, and SHG just got split apart. They almost got Jezzes down early, but with the minions in the bottom lane pushing closer to the Nexus turrets, SK timed their Baron push perfectly. If Super Haku had tried to stall or delay or look for uh, engages, the Super minions would have done damage to the Nexus turrets. SK just continued to accelerate their lead, and they show a very good understanding of how to force your opponent's hands and how to create openings and opportunities. Something that we didn't see from the game previously, where Rocket were, you know, very far ahead and just couldn't force their opponents into positions that would work for them. Now, something we often see from SK Gaming is complete objective control with those all the dragons, all the barons, and seven towers, 14 three up in kills, minutes in the next dragon, which almost certainly will be timed down to the split second. They could just move on round. Minions in that bot lane, of course, Inhibitor is still there. So it's respawn. They can go back, finish that one off. Jezzes are going to keep that top wave, waiting to see if anyone's going to show themselves first. Doesn't look like it's going to happen with Super Hot Crew. They're not pushing out anymore because, simply put, they've got no vision. No, they haven't. And I don't think they made a concerted enough effort in the early game to try and contain Cassidy, even though Jezzes is very oh, far behind. Oh, just CS. strolled on in here. Oh. Does try to go for this one. I don't think you realize it's just how many members of SK were clo close to oh, Sven manages to smite it away. They weren't looking for the uh, for the fight because there wasn't enough vision for SK. So they didn't look to engage out of fear of being outflanked. But I mean, 317 on this Cassidy, he's got almost completed that Zonia's Hourglass. Inhibitors respawn in the bottom lane. So let's see how SK opts to take these objectives. Uh, they could send Svensko. He can flank from oh, behind. Oh, start finding Mr. Rales. That's problems. They're going to try and dive onto this one. Svensko coming around the side. He's flanking in there. Remember, there's no tower on the right-hand side. The tower takes a beating. Candy Panda on that one. He's going to take the tower down. Freddy coming into the side there. Selfie taking a lot of punishment as well. And SK just brute force their way into Super Hot Crew's base. Yeah, they get one. The presence of Svensko from the side means Super Hot Crew forced to back away. If they'd stuck to defend, Sven simply would have thrown his ultimate down and gone for the tower dive. Candy Panda had only the tower in his targets. He didn't look to go for kills. He didn't look to poke Super Hockey down. And this really is a hell of a turnaround from yesterday, where SK simply couldn't string together a gank, let alone a tower or map-based play. So Jez is a little poke and play with Selfie, who has been basically null and void in this game. 0-5-1 on that Nocturne in the mid lane. We were excited to see it. We're not on you. Didn't work out. I don't think Impaler 
was able to make ganks happen. And, and I think SK did a really good job of accelerating the laning phase. They moved around quickly, they forced towers, and now SK are on their third and final inhibitor turret. Selfie's defending the Nexus, and Subaku are split. They don't have the resources to defend this onslaught from so many directions. Two flanks, Jake, Gracial, Fisher only catching on towards Enraged. They're gonna dive on Candy Panda. Have they got enough in there? Candy Panda, Black Shield, defends him instantly. And Pana goes down. He's in the hole from Candy Panda, enough to stop him down. Selfie gets caught out by Jezus. Yarrow in all sorts of trouble. He's gonna get locked up. Freddy doing the gleaming damage on towards him. Jezus gets the kill down. He gets himself the triple. 6-1-8. Cassidy, in, it's quite clear, is better than Nocturne in the mid lane in this game. SK Gaming, solid performance, 18-3 overall, and that will be them taking themselves second place once again, 8-4 and four overall in the league. It's a good performance for SK Gaming.